Okay, we are still discussing DML, data manipulation language, and now let's talk about upserting records. So what is an upsert? Upsert is an update and or insert. So let's just cut to the chase and copy this sample code. I'm going to copy this. I'm gonna flip back to my developer console my execute anonymous window and paste it here. So let's talk about this. So first we want to insert a contact. So contact, the variable name Josh. Instantiate it. The contact first name is Josh. Last name is Kaplan, Department Finance. And insert Josh, right? So let me just delete the comment so it's not confusing here. I'm going to delete this one as well, and this one, and this one, and this one, all right? So insert Josh. So this is a transaction. So Josh is now inserted, right? But after it is inserted, we want to change the value of the records description. So Josh, which is a contact, Josh dot description is this now. Josh's record has been updated by the upset operation, all right? So we just set the value of the description of Josh, but we haven't actually executed that, right? Now, we create a new contact, Kathy. Same thing, first name is Kathy, last name is Brown, department is technology. Now we put both Josh and Kathy into a list, right? Here list of contact the variable name is contacts so this is the list variable name and then new list of contact and we are wanting to add oopsie curly braces josh and kathy which is kathy here and josh into the list okay into the list of contact and then absurd the contacts so when this is executed, we have one Josh Kaplan. The description would be this, right? And then Kathy, the description is blank. So we will not be creating two Joshes, no, just one. Because the first one is inserted and then the second one is, is an absurd, right? So let's execute this. If I execute this and I open the lock, boom, oopsie. 9 and 5, did I, new list count, oh, forgot semicolon, boom, execute that, now if I flip back, we have Josh and Kathy on the contacts here, and I'm going to go all contacts, we have Josh Kaplan, Josh Kaplan, just one, and not two, right? And the description is here. Josh's record has been updated by the upset operation, right? And the other one is Kathy. Kathy who? Kathy. Control E. Kathy Brown. We should also have Kathy Brown here. Kathy Brown. I'm going to change this to all contacts. Kathy Brown. Here is Kathy Brown. So that's how you absurd a, um, a record onto Salesforce. A second way you can do is doing it like this. So let's copy this again. And I am going to flip back to my developer console and delete, clear out the whole thing, paste the new code. And I'm just going to delete the comment because we can just talk about that comment stuff. I don't want to do an, um, well, we can assert equals. Well, let's do that as well. So, oops, keep doing that, hey. So, contact Jane. Jane, new contact, first name, last name, email, description, and insert Jane. So, Jane now is inserted into the record, in, into the database, right? Now, we're going to make 
contact again, Jane 2, but it's exactly the same, Jane Smith and then that, but the description is different, right? Prefers to be contacted by email. Now we do upset Jane 2, but we, we define contact fields, upset by email here, match it by the email. That's how you do it another way. There's always several ways or many ways yeah, that you can do with Salesforce that result the same thing. So there's many ways you can do. It depends um, how you want to do it. And then this, this is just basically evaluating um, that we only have one Jane. So I'm just going to take this out or we can leave it, leave it like that and execute. We will only have one Jane Smith there. Okay. Execute. And if I flip back to my records here and all contacts again, we have one Jane Smith there. there. And the description would be prefers to be contacted by email, which is the second part here, right? Here. So this is doing an absurd and it's not inserting a whole new Jane here. Okay, if I do insert here and then delete this part, it's going to have two Jane, exactly the same thing. We don't want that. So that's, that's what an absurd can be used for, right? updating existing record and you can manipulate the data however you like it all right so let's go flip back to our trail again and now you can delete records as well so you can do this contact is a list contacts del this is the variable name right this is an array or a list so you select or do a circle, select ID from contact where what? Last name is Smith and then delete the whole th thing. So let's play and let's see what have we here. If I go all contacts, who would you like to delete? Let's see here. Let's delete everybody who starts with a J here. That's a bunch of J. J Jack, Jake, Jane, Jane. Jane, Jane, Jimmy, Joe, John, Josh, Josh. Lots of J. Let's delete everybody that starts with a J, okay? So I'm going to copy this and flip back and to my developer console, execute anonymous window. You can close that. And delete and boom. Now, contact an array or a list, contacts DAO, a circle equals select ID from contact where? First name, name, we say not equals, but like, like J, starts with a J and a percent. Percent means it's a wild card. Anything that starts with a J, delete them, delete contacts down. All right, let's execute. Boom. Whoops. Oh. It's associated with the following cases. Okay, that's a bit complex because our contact, Mr. Jack Rogers, owns some cases. If Jack Rogers owns cases, you can't just delete the contact if there are related records to the contact. That's how good Salesforce is, making sure your data is intact. Okay, let's just choose a particular one then let's jimmy bow i'm pretty sure it's pretty blank let's just delete jimmy bow here okay this is yeah so let's just name like jimmy jimmy whatever in the end okay execute that boom jimmy bow doesn't have any cases associated to it so that should work sony jimmy bow here if i refresh here i refresh the list here Boom. See, Jimmy Bono is gone. So that's how you can delete a contact. I'm going to do control E again. That's how you do it. Pretty simple, right? Pretty straightforward. Okay, let's go back to the trail. What else can we talk about here? DML statement exceptions. Okay. Um, this is basically catching it if it doesn't work 
as you would expect it, right? So for example, this example produced a DML exception because it attempts, it attempts to insert an account without the required name field. The exception is caught in the catch block. So it's caught here. It has, so it's catching an error. If there is an error, please catch it. So, so let's do and try that, okay? And I'm gonna paste that. So we're gonna try and insert this and we don't do anything. It's just account variable name is ACCT instantiated new account, but we don't, we don't put the value of the name which is required then it's gonna error out, right? So we wanna know what happens if your code or your lines produces an error. So you can you can catch it, what's going on if it doesn't execute, okay? So I'm gonna execute, and I'm gonna just view just the debug here, debug only, there. DML exception has occurred. Insert failed, first exception on row zero. Required field missing. Required fields are missing. Name, right? So you don't have the name there. Now, if I go back here and just provide the name, name equals bada bing, bada boom. Okay, and basically just execute that. We won't have an error because we provided the required field. See, it's, there is no error. And if I refresh my account list here, not the contact, but my account list. Here, accounts. We should have, we should have bada bing, bada boom. All right, there you have it. So I'm going to split the video here and talk about database methods on the next video hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the salesforce app exchange and do yourself a favor like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it, don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.